E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World, é, fazendo mais um vídeo do H64D. H64D. É, o produtor seno do pessoal do DCS, o Matt Egni, postou mais um vídeo. Agora é a segunda parte. Pera aí. Deixa eu mostrar aqui. H64D. Você vem aqui em mini atualizações lá no fórum. Pera aí, só carregar aqui. É, é a segunda parte do vídeo anterior, que é o TADS, ou TADS, que a gente chama, né? Aqui no, no fórum aqui, que saiu há mais ou menos 9 horas atrás, ele tem uma descrição do vídeo. Eu vou postar o vídeo naquele esquema, com legenda em português, mas se vocês quiserem dar uma lida, é só acessar aqui o fórum do DCS, que está disponível aqui. Deixa eu só ir para o meu canal aqui, deixa eu procurar aqui. Matt Egner, produtor sênior. Deixa eu ver aqui os vídeos. Tá aqui, beleza. Hey. Só colocar a legenda aqui. Sabe como é que é essa legenda é, do YouTube, né? Pera aí. É um português, mas é um português lá de Portugal, acredito eu. Esses caras são é sacana, filho. É um vídeo pequenininho, pessoal. Coisa rápida. Naquele esquema, não esqueça de assinar o canal, não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo, pessoal. Se vocês não compartilhar o vídeo, o pessoal não distribui. É, vou postar aqui, se for necessário, eu faço algumas considerações finais. DCS Word, H64D, ou que eu chamo de TADS, parte 2. Aqui é a continuação do vídeo anterior, bora lá. Só colocar aqui tela cheia para vocês. Pera aí, colocar o som, lá vai. And the tech. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In the previous AH64D video on the TADS, we reviewed some of the basic functionality of using the TADS from the front seat. In part two, we'll explore some more TADS functions from the front seat and discuss using the TADS from the back pilot seat. Before we dive into it though, let's touch on site selection and acquisition source. This can often confuse new folks coming to the AH-64D, and it deserves a few words of explanation. The simplest way to think of it is that the site selection is what you're using to see, and the acquisition source is what you want to see. At release, possible site selections include the Hellman Mounted Displayer HMD and the TADS. Later, the Fire Control Radar FCR will also be a possible site. Selecting any of these from the site select switch determines what device we're using to search and acquire targets as well as aim our selected weapon. The acquisition source, on the other hand, allows us to determine what we want our site to be directed to. Some of the possible acquisition sources that we could have our site directed to are the other crew member's HMD line of sight, where the TADS is looking, where a Hellfire Seeker is locked to, a TSD point or coordinate, or fixed ahead. These can be selected from R6 on the TSD and weapon pages. When an acquisition source is selected, we'll get the queuing dots around the HDU line of sight crosshairs, as well as the broken line of sight reticle. I'll link back to the iHats video in the card above. But in the back seat, the pilot sight is always slave to the acquisition source, meaning he will always see the broken line of sight reticle within his HMD symbology. However, in the CPG's case, regardless of what sight he's using, the CPG must always hit the slave button to display his acquisition source in his HMD symbology. If using the TAS as your sight in the CPG seat, We'll still get the queuing dots in the TADS line of sight crosshairs and the acquisition broken line of sight reticle, but only after enable slaving using the slave button. When selecting slave, the TADS sight is slaved to the selected acquisition source. When the slave button is pressed again to deslave, the manual tracker controller on the right TDEC RIP, also called the thumb force controller, can then be used to move the TADS. This may sound like a lot, but with practice, it will become second nature. Okay, back to the TADS while we're still in the CPG seat. So first, using the TDAC FLIR polarity button on the TDAC right hand grip 
or the boresite polarity switch on the collective flight grip, we can swap the FLIR polarity between white hot and black hot. White hot is most often used, but you may find that black hot works for you best in some conditions. On the TDAC left hand grip is the TDAC Linear Motion Compensator button or LMC. When enabled, the system will partially counteract helicopter movement to null out TADS movement. Note though that this is not a ground stabilization system. Now where this can be handy is using the thumb force controller, you can impart a slew direction and it'll continue in that direction at the rate of the force that was pressed. In doing so, you can place the TADS crosshairs over a moving target and adjust the LMC slew to move along with the moving vehicle. Let's take a look at this in operation. We briefly touched on this in the last video, but in addition to displaying the TADS on the TDU, you can also display the TADS over your right eye through the HDU when the TADS is the selected site. Now, just like the TDU, we can adjust our SLU, swap between FLIR and DTV, change our field of view, and swap our FLIR polarity. When using the TADS on the HDU, you may wish to turn off the TDU. At this point, we discussed enough about TADS in the front seat to make it dangerous. So let's head to the back seat and look at the pilot TADS controls. First, we can display TADS on the MPDs using the video page button. By selecting TADS at R1 and TADS again at T6, we can display what the TADS is seeing. At L1, 2, and 3, you can select the field of views between wide, normal, and zoom. Adjust the video image with the video and brightness knobs. This can be very useful to see what the CPG is seeing during engagement through the TADS. When flying at night, we can set the night vision sensor or NVS to either use the pilot night vision sensor or PNVS or the TADS as a navigation FLIR. As mentioned in the last video though, the CPG will most often have control over the TADS and the pilot will use the PNVS. In a pinch though, the pilot can select the TAS as the NVS sensor by toggling the NVS select switch on the collective flight grip. That's it for now, and don't forget to study your acronyms. Thanks for watching. É, pessoal, o trem vai ser porreta, como diz o outro. Não vai ser fácil, não. DCS World H64D TADS, ou TADS, parte 2. O nosso... Produtor sênior Matt Egno colocou explicadinha aí. Qualquer coisa vocês dão uma lida aqui. Naquele esquema, a previsão do lançamento do H64D é para o primeiro trimestre desse ano de 2022. <risos> Tem gente que está esperando para fevereiro. Eu estou esperando para o final de março, né? Sabe como é que é essas datas do DCS? Começa com uma coisa e termina com outra. Quando a máquina chegar, a gente posta mais vídeo, pessoal. Eu acredito que o Matt Egg ainda vai postar mais vídeo dele aí. Naquele esquema, pessoal, não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo aí. Isso é muito importante. Valeu, foi!